So in this video, we're going to talk more about the MOS capacitor, and we're going to talk about it in inversion mode. Uh, inversion mode. Well, what is that? Um, well, first, let's just draw out our MOS capacitor, so the model that we've been using for it. It's just this nice little cuboid. Um, we know we've got uh, some metal up top, some oxide, insulating oxide in the middle, and a semiconductor. So metal, oxide, semiconductor, MOS. And as usual, uh, we're going to assume it's p-type. Uh, if you're wondering why we always assume it's p-type, uh, partly because the p-type semi p-type wafers, silicon wafers, are the most common. Partly, it just makes our analysis easier if we only ever consider one type of um, semiconductor, and then we can kind of just extend our intuition uh, for what should happen to n-type semiconductors too. And we're assuming that we ground this uh, semiconductor or the substrate body, etc., and we apply some voltage to the gate. So what is inversion mode? Well, we know if this is a p-type semiconductor, we've got a bunch of uh, holes floating around. We've also got a bunch of negatively charged ions, so probably some boron atoms that just uh, donated one of their holes or gained an electron, and now they're ions. Um, and we know that if we apply, uh, let's say we apply a voltage uh, such that we start to add some holes to this metal. So we're probably applying a positive voltage. Um, then we're gonna start to scare away uh, these holes in the semiconductor and they're gonna move into the bulk uh, region. So they're gonna move away from the interface and towards the bulk. And the things that we're left with are just the negatively charged ions. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of holes in the substrate. But what happens if we keep increasing the voltage? So we keep increasing it, keep increasing it, keep increasing it. Um, turns out we will actually uh, start to attract electrons to the surface. So we will have so many holes here that not only do we have this depletion layer that's formed, uh, so these negatively charged ions, but we've also got a ton of electrons near the surface. Now that's kind of weird. Um, that's very weird. Uh, because we know that there's not that many electrons in this p-type semiconductor like there's a few but I don't know like not not that much um, if the doping is high there might only be like 10 to the 5 per cubic centimeter so the fact that we can uh, we can have this is really interesting and it's more easily understood if we look at the band diagram so we know that for a uh, p-type semiconductor We've got our intrinsic energy, our valence energy, and our, uh, oh, wow, that, that is the wrong direction. Conduction band up top, valence band, uh, valence band down in the bottom. Um, and we know if this is a p-type semiconductor, we've got our Fermi level closer to the valence band. So this is p-type semiconductor. And we know if this is an, N if we have an n-type semiconductor in contrast, the Fermi level is gonna be much closer to the conduction band. So this is an n-type semiconductor. So E, C, E, I, and E, V. And we know that if we cause, uh, we know that we can cause band bending in our p-type semiconductor. So if we cause the bands to bend too much or we cause them to bend a lot, um, then what we end up with uh, near the edge so let's just erase these real quick. Um, if we have a lot of band bending, what we end up with is near this edge, very close to this edge, the band diagram actually looks like an n-type semiconductor. So the Fermi level, oops, sorry, uh, so the Fermi level EF is above EI. So in each case here, it's above EI. So near the surface, if this is the oxide semiconductor interface, for example, um, near this surface, the semiconductor looks like it's an n-type semiconductor. And that's exactly the same as saying, well, we've got a bunch of electrons here. So it turns out this band bending leads to something that we might not necessarily expect, that electrons actually get attracted to the surface of the uh, semiconductor oxide interface. 
and this process is called inversion. Um, and that kind of makes sense, right? Because we had a p-type semiconductor, and now it looks like an n-type semiconductor because there's so many electrons near the surface. Now, this is only true near the very surface, right? Because the electrons are only very, very close to uh, the metal. So in the bulk, things will look, or in the, semi, in the bulk semiconductor, things will look approximately the same uh, if we go far, far away. But near the surface, uh, we get this thing called inversion. And so the next natural question, the one you know I'm going to ask if you watch the previous two videos, is what voltage do we need to apply uh, to achieve inversion? Well, we know that if we apply a voltage uh, equal to phi ms, uh, if we apply a voltage to the gate, and that's a, probably a negative voltage, but maybe not, um, then our band diagram will look like this. We'll have our metal, uh, so the Fermi, Fermi level of our metal, we'll have our oxide, and then we'll have our semiconductor. And we've got our conduction band, our valence band, our intrinsic Fermi energy, and since this is p-type, uh, we've got our Fermi energy. And this, uh, as usual, is the voltage applied. Uh, this difference between the Fermi energies now is the voltage applied. And Q, strictly speaking, is Q times the voltage applied because it's an energy. But I like to use these things inter interchangeably because it makes things easier to understand. And so we want the band diagram, what do, we want, what do we want it to look like? Well, we want it to look like this, right? We want the intrinsic energy, the valence band, and the conduction band to all bend towards um, the uh, the Fermi energy and to do this we need to drag uh, we need to drag this side up we need to drag up the the bulk and to do that we need to apply a negative voltage so apply a negative voltage or a positive voltage to the gate um, and again it's a negative voltage because uh, energy is the this is the energy of electrons so energy of electrons is minus Q times the voltage and that's undyingly annoying i know um sorry that's that's just the way it is um so if we redraw our, our band diagram after we apply this positive voltage uh it'll look something like this so the fermi uh fermi levels will be closer together um probably it depends on what the value of fms is but here we've assumed it's it's negative um we've got our conduction band our valence band actually let me draw those a little a uh, little smaller so we can bend them. And then our intrinsic Fermi energy. Whoa, what, what have I done? Um, this, sorry. Um, intrinsic Fermi energy should be here. And in the bulk, we want the Fermi level to still stay roughly the same. It's still a P-type semiconductor. And we want these bands to now bend, or these bands will now bend downwards. And we're also going to get some oxide band bending, so this is also going to bend. Uh, this also will bend, but we, we don't really know how much. Um, so that's that's going to be in a separate video. So we know that to uh, to achieve this, we need to apply FMS plus some positive voltage. I'm going to call it delta V. Um, what is this delta V though? So what is this? Um, well, it's a little complicated, right? Because we know the oxide's going to bend some. Uh, we know the, uh, and we know the semiconductor's going to bend some, but this is going to be linear. This is going to be quadratic. It's kind of a pain. And this is actually going to be in its own video. Uh, and it turns out this quantity, uh, we actually call the threshold voltage, VT. And it's a very special quantity uh, in dealing with MOSFETs. And I've made a, a few videos on it. Uh, so you can check those out if you're curious what exactly this voltage needs to be. But this is the general idea. We're causing uh, band bending such that we get an inverting of the type of semiconductor. So where we once had holes, uh, we now have a bunch of electrons. And we've also got these ions sitting here, but we don't really talk about those. Uh, we, just, we just like to pretend they're not there. Um, but they, they, they are there, so you should be aware that they, they do still exist. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Uh, if you like the video, please uh, push the thumbs up button and subscribe. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.
拜。